Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Lestrada is a light abstract filler type game from Martin Wallace of all people. Martin Wallace is kind of more known for these action point games, which this has, but a little bit more of an economic or a little bit stronger feel to it. You know, sometimes I'm not the biggest fan of his, and other times I really am a fan of his. This is one of those games I'm like, what were you thinking? And probably just trying something new, or you got a contract to put something light and filler out. I was like, heck, we'll try that out. You know, La Strada is, is not a very strong game, in my opinion. If you're looking for a light, strategic, abstract game that's very simple, this is probably it. You're going to have a number of action points you can use on the turn, and how you utilize those will inform your scoring, which is really all you're trying to do. The theme is bland. It's just kind of pasted on. Decisions are rather straightforward. I felt like it was very, very light, which still might be exactly what you're looking for. I just feel like this has been lost through the time, not because it's a hidden gem, but because of the game itself. It isn't what I'm necessarily going to recommend to you. If you wanted to try it out or you wanted to Maybe collect all of Martin Wallace's games, and this one have to be in your collection. But I think you're got quite the undertaking there. He's, got, he's published a lot of games, and is one of the best game designers that our hobby has, or at least one of the most famous ones. So you have a lot to collect. This is one I would say strictly would be with the light fillers. I don't feel like the decisions were strong enough for me, and I didn't really like it at all. And when I was done playing, I was just like, I don't really want to play this again. I played it three or four times, that's it. Maybe it gets deeper if you play more than that, but for me, this is definitely, definitely gonna be a purge. Here's the Strata, which is really a filler game from Martin Wallace. We'll take a look and see what's inside. Really boring box, to be very honest, with these horses on the front. You're gonna get a rule book. That will be just a couple pages long, which we'll take a look at it. You're going to have these boards that kind of fit together, so you can have kind of a unique one, a modular board every time. And you're going to have these that will make a puzzle to make the board. We'll show you that in the flow of the game. Then you're going to get a bunch of tiles, which are really small, but they're thick and they're nice, and they're fine for a little abstract game. And some cubes that you're going to get in the game. Uh, the components are kind of boring, bland, you know, very outdated kind of stuff here, with just roads on them. The quality is fine. But nothing's going to blow your mind. You know, you don't see a lot of games with cubes nowadays. But this is a little light filler abstract game, so it may fit it just fine. Here's the rule book for La Strada. You're going to have a picture of setup kind of here with the components listed, but no pictures, which is a big boo-boo for me. Uh, you're going to have the components in detail, so you are going to get it here on the second page, which they redeemed themselves. You're going to get the setup and the play of the game. There are some questions that are left out of it here, like, are the tiles just stacked up? Are they shuffled? You don't really get that information. The game is very simple. You're going to have scoring over here. This is a scoring example of how to play. And there is a turn-by-turn -turn base and a two-player rule set. So the game is really a three- or four-player game. There's a modification to make a two-player on the back. The rule book is okay, shaky at best. set the game, you're going to take all the tiles with this back, so you're going to randomly set them on the board, covering up the tiles that are just like it. Then you're going to take all of your cubes and buildings in your color, and you'll set those aside for your own. On your turn, you're going to have a, everybody's going to have their own uh, resource track. In each turn, you're going to get six resources. On your turn, you can take these tiles, and you can build them on the board. A plain tile will require two resources to play it down. A forest tile will require three. And a hill will require four. And those will be what you'll be utilizing. At the beginning of the game, each player will place their own settlement down on the board. It cannot be near any other settlement. And that would be how they would start the game. And I wanted to play a settlement to go across there. Maybe I could play this one, this bit road here, and I could play it just like this, and that would take my road, my from my settlement into this one, and then I would place a cube on it, signifying that I have scored that location. The game ends when all the settlements have been reached. There are no more merchant cubes to be placed, or you'll have the correct tile left to place. At that point, we will move to scoring. And you'll see locations down here at the scoring block. 
you see a little bit of a scoring block, and you'll have one of these on each corner, and you'll see a type of building. So what you would do is, let's say there were three different cubes on a building of this type, then you would put it into the box with three cubes on it, and you would get one gold at the end of the game. If there had only been two on it, you'd put it in this box and you would get two, and if you were the sole person, you would get three. Now, you're going to do that for each type of building there is in the game, and that will score you a certain amount of gold, and whoever has the most gold will win the game. But Strahd is a very, very simple game where you're just building these paths to get to different areas, and when you get there, you definitely get to put a cube down, and that will help you score. But the more people that get to the location, the less points that building is going to be worth. So you want to get to the buildings that only you will get there and not everyone else. Who should buy this game? So Martin Wallace fan. So if you want to try his games, even though this game is very different than what you normally get from him, some people are just fans of his and want to play more of his games. If you're looking for a light, abstract filler game. That's this. There's not a whole lot going on, although, you know, the theme, whatever theme it pretends to have, is very abstract. It's just kind of thrown on there. And really, you're just placing things to maximize your score without any kind of story or narrative or reason for what you're doing. You're going to get a certain amount of action points per turn. Use them the best you can. Because if you don't use the action points, they're lost from turn to turn. It's pretty much what you're getting here. So this is definitely, if you have interest in this, I would say try before you buy. Purge for me. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.